Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards here for Pawsome Stamps. Today I'm so excited to be bringing this to you for Pawsome Stamps. I'm creating this fun Christmas in July card using Picture Perfect stamp set, Picture Pals stamp set. I've also used the Gingerbread Lane for the garland, the bead garland and the hearts. Um, I've brought in um, the Berry Christmas stamp set. This is just for the string of lights, so I'm just going to use those. And also the Just Sentiments Christmas stamp set. And finally, the Candy Stripes background stencil. Lots of things today, but I'm only using little parts of that. So what I've done is I've taken that bead garland from Gingerbread Lane and I've stamped it out and then painstakingly cut out all the little circles to create a mask. Now I'm taking this round frame from Picture Perfect and I'm going to stamp that over top. So my garland is going to be in the front. So whatever you want to be in the front of your picture, you stamp a mask and then the things that are going further back, you stamp in order, if that makes sense. So you go from front to back with your stamping. So now I'm taking this little um, parrot from the Picture Pals stamp set and I'm gonna stamp him in the middle of my frame. So all I need to mask for this is the bead garland. So I'm just stamping this out with some Copic Friendly um, ink because I'm gonna be using my Copics today. Now here I've done the same thing with the string of lights from that Berry Christmas stamp set. So again, I've stamped out the string of lights. I've cut out all the lights and I'm um, using just, just some um, post-it note, full stick post-it note. Um, to create a mask and now I'm stamping this kind of rectangle frame on top of that. It is at a bit of an angle because I wanted to stamp it so that the lights were kind of um, on top of the frame and stamping that out a couple of times using my Copic Friendly ink. This time I'm going to take the little um, giraffe for this kind of rectangle frame and I'm going to stamp him on top and again, I don't need to worry about masking the frame because the, these picture pals fit perfectly into these picture perfect frames. So they're designed to go together and they work perfectly. So all the masking that I need to do is the lights and the bead strings. So off camera, I did exactly the same thing for the little lion with the oval frame. So um, again, just stamped out the lights first and then I um, kind of mask them off. I just used the same mask that I'd used on the giraffe frame. So I just transferred them over and then stamped out my little lion. Now I'm taking my Copic multi-liner and I'm just adding some details. So the little lion, he hadn't reached all the way down to the bottom of the frame. So I just filled him in. And then for the little parrot, I wanted him to look like he was sitting on a branch. Um, otherwise he just kind of looked like he was floating in space. So I'm not a particularly good artist, um, but it was easy enough to draw a little branch with some leaves for him to sit on. So that's what I did. Now I'm taking a slimline scalloped um, die that I have cut from some Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm masking off the edges. I want to keep that scalloped edge white. So I'm just masking off up to the stitched line. And now I'm going to take my Candy Stripes stencil and add some detail to the back. Um, this was a bit of an experiment for me. I'm quite new to using stencils, but I'm absolutely loving using them. So I've been bringing them out a lot. I'm using my Barn Door Distress Oxide ink and I'm kind of pouncing it on through the stencil. So I'm going quite heavy handed. Now the thing to remember about Distress just when I get my words out, distress oxides, is that they do um, dry back. So it's not going to be quite as bold and bright as it looks at the moment. It does dry back a bit and the colour fades ever so slightly. So once I'd done this part, I had to kind of figure out how I was going to move my stencil along to continue the pattern um, to make it slimline. This stencil is a um, six by six stencil, I believe. So um, it took me a little while to figure that out, but let me show you what I did because I went ahead and did it off camera. So I started out like that. And what I did was I just moved my stencil down following the lines so that it moved across the, um, the slimline page. Then I masked off the top part of it 
and then just moved it over until I got to a point where it matched up again and then masked off the left hand side of it and continued inking. I hope that makes sense. It was fairly easy to do, but it did take me a little while to figure it out. My brain doesn't work that quickly. But anyway, that's what I wanted to do. I figured out the placement and then I stamped out the first part of my sentiment. So the sentiment that I used is, um, although the miles keep us apart, um, you'll be in my heart this Christmas. I wanted the first part, although the miles keep us apart, to be um, in the center at the front of my card and then the rest of the sentiment is going to be in the center. Because I just wanted it to be a bit like, um, yeah, a, a, far, a long distance Christmas card. Where I, I live in the UAE, we're a long way from family and friends and we often don't see them at Christmas. So this was um, something that kind of stuck in my heart. And when I saw that sentiment on the Christmas sentiments um, stamp set, I couldn't resist using it. And this idea just kind of sprung to mind. Although these picture pals are not Christmas images, um, I just had the idea of all these um, kind of pictures on the wall with the strings of lights and garlands around them and um, remembering the people that were far away from at Christmas time. So that's where the inspiration came from. For my colouring, I, as I said, I'm using my Copic markers. I'm starting out with my lights and bead strings and I've used um, for my greens G17 and G14, for my reds R27 and R24, for my blues B04 and B01 and for my yellows Y17 and Y15. And I'm just doing a similar pattern on each one um, for the beads and the lights. On to my lion. Um, he was a joy to colour. <laughs> I'm using E37, E35, E33 and E31. So starting out with his mane, I'm going in with my E37, laying in my shadow, so all the way around the edge of his face and then kind of just around his, um, his mane on the outside to add a little bit of depth and dimension. I always like to start my colouring with my darkest marker and then blend out towards my lightest. So now I'm going in with my E35 and I'm going kind of right on the edge of those um, E37 marks that I've already put down and just blending them out, extending them a little bit further um, just to, as I say, create some light and shade. Then I'll do the same thing with my E33 and just take it a little bit further out each time until I get to a point where I've just got um, a little bit of white space left to fill in which I will use my lightest color marker for. And although this is quite a small space, I used four markers. It's not necessary to use four. Um, I did it because I'm really enjoying that contrast between light and shade at the moment. Um, and I just like the added dimension it gives, but by all means, you wouldn't need to use more than two markers really. I just kind of went to town a little bit and I had so much fun coloring these guys. Um, then I went in with my YR markers. So I have YR27, YR24, YR23 and YR21 and YR20 actually, <laughs> so loads. So I'm starting out with my YR27, then my YR24, then I'll go in with my YR23. And again, I'm just blending out from lightest to darkest. Uh, again, I used a lot of markers, but as I say, I'm just really enjoying that play between light and dark. So I'm finishing off with the YR21, and then for his kind of nose, his nuzzle, um, muzzle even, <laughs> I'm using the YR21 and the YR20, so just the lighter two shades for that part of him. Uh, again, for his main body, I'll use those darker shades on the outside, so YR27, YR24, YR23 and I think a touch of YR21 on these ones if there's enough room and then in the middle again I'm just using those two lighter shades YR21 and YR20 and I really like um, these colors for a lion I think they look quite quite good for him and he is just so gorgeous I love this illustration in fact I love the stamp set couldn't resist the stamp set it's just gorgeous so R20 for the inside of his ears and his little cheeks. And then I'm gonna go in with some N8 and N6 for his nose to add a nice dark black nose. And just using the N8 quite sparingly and then blending out with the N6. 
For this guy, I'm not sure what kind of bird he is. He could definitely be a toucan. Um, but because I was going with African animals, I was inspired by Zazu from The Lion King. And um, so I've added a couple more little lines on him using my um, Copic multi-liner. And now I'm gonna color him in with these kind of dusky blue markers. So at B, 97, 95, and 93. And as I say, I was inspired by um, the bird from The Lion King called Zazu. And that's where my color inspiration came from. <laughs> um, and I often get color inspiration from all sorts of places, but I Googled, um, I Googled Zazu and um, don't ask me how to spell that because I've got no idea. Um, but I just Googled the Lion King, I think, and I came up with this, um, this bird and figured out the colors from him. So he's kind of like um, a bluish, almost a purple in some pictures, but I went with this blue color combination. Then I'm taking back out that N6 and N8 and just adding that to the very tips of his tail and his wing. And just to add a little bit of black, I'm leaving that kind of stripe completely white. For his um, kind of the, the top part of his face, I'm just going on with N0 and the colorless blender just to keep it fairly white, but just add a bit of shading. And then finally for his beak, YR18 and YR16. So once his beak was finished, I did go in with my R20 and just add a little cheek to him as well. Uh, and then it was on to this kind of branch that I've created for him to sit on. Um, and, uh, you know, as I say, I'm not um, an artist by any stretch of the imagination, which is why I love stamping and coloring so much because I don't have to worry about drawing the images. Somebody else who's far better than me uh, makes those and these images are just gorgeous but I did just want him to be sitting on a branch you could definitely have him sitting on the edge of the frame but I didn't want any part of him to be kind of um, either hanging off the frame or cut off so I wanted to center him a little bit more into the frame and then I just added this branch it's not perfect but I think it works um, onto my giraffe, and again, isn't he just so cute? I'm using those same YR20 and 21 markers for his nuzzle or um, nose, I don't know. <laughs> um, and uh, just blending those out. And then I'm going in with Y38, Y35, and Y32 for the main parts of him. And um, he's just, the, all of these images are just adorable. There's a little fish in there. There's a llama, which my daughter absolutely adores. Uh, loads and loads of cute images. So I'm not being too worried about those um, spots at the top either. I'm not too worried about kind of going over them because I'm gonna use a darker brown marker for those so you won't see if I kind of bleed into those spots a little bit. So for my um, darker brown parts, I'm using that Y37 and Y35 that I used earlier on my lion. I also use those same browns for the ossicones. I had to Google that. Um, that's what you call the kind of antenna <laughs> on the giraffe. So they're called ossicones. I had no idea, just found that out. So for my frames, I am going to go with um, the same colors for all of the frames, and I'm gonna color them in exactly the same way. So I'm using E87, E84, and E81 for the inner frame. Um, and I like these because I think they kind of give a bit of a bronzy type look. And what I'm going for with these frames is a bit of an old fashioned um, gold frame. So I thought this worked quite well. And what I do is I choose two parts of my frame to be darker, and then I kind of blend out on either side of that towards lightest. And I think that gives it a bit of a dimensional kind of um, curved look, if you like. Then I'm going in with Y28, Y26, and Y23 for the rest of the frame. Now this Y28, I find quite difficult to blend out, but what I've found works is to go over it completely with the Y26, um, but then also kind of go a little bit further out than that as well. Um, so I will trace over exactly where I've gone over with the Y28, and I'll use my Y26 and trace over that completely, but then just go slightly further out as well. And what I find is that gives it um, a bit of a, a shadow, a bit of dimension. Um, hopefully you can see that here, but it also um, 
kind of helps to blend it out a little bit. That Y28 is quite an uh, unusual color, but I really like the look that it gives, but it was just quite hard to blend. So I found that this worked the best. So just tracing over completely those parts that I've already colored, and then just kind of extending it out a little bit further with the Y26. And then finally, I'll just fill in all the other pieces with the Y23. So once I've completed my little lion's frame, I'm going to do all the others in exactly the same way. Um, I wanted there to be some uniformity between my images so that they all look like they belong together. Um, the look I'm going for is kind of a wall in somebody's house where all the framed pictures of loved ones are hung up and obviously decorated for the holidays because they're thinking about them while they're apart. <laughs> um, I hope that makes sense. So I've done the backgrounds in exactly the same way as well, and I'm just using G00 for the backgrounds. I wanted these backgrounds to be quite subtle. I want the critters to be the stars of the show because they are just absolutely gorgeous. So I really wanted them to be the ones that stood out and not the background. So I just chose quite a pale color to fill those in. So there we are, they're all complete, coloring is done. And I'm going to um, attach them down onto my card base, which is here, and I've stamped out that sentiment, even though miles keep us apart. So I'm gonna pop them down with some foam squares. Then I've cut a standard size slimline card base. This is three and a half by eight and a half inches. And I've used some red cardstock to um, coordinate with that kind of candy stripe background that I've done. And I'm going to adhere that down with some liquid glue so that it's nice and strong and good for mailing, basically. Once that's done, I'm going to create a little panel to put inside my card um, to write the sentiment on. And this is where the rest of the sentiment will go, which says, you'll be in my heart this Christmas. So I've used the rest of that sentiment and then these little hearts, which came from the Gingerbread Lane stamp set. And again, I'm just going to attach this down with some liquid glue so that it's stuck down nice and firmly um, and try and center it as good as possible. I didn't get it quite right to begin with, but I managed to move it around so that I think it was fairly centered in the end. Did manage to get glue everywhere, <laughs> which is a common theme when I'm making cards, um, but just use my little um, kind of pokey tool to scrape that off a little bit so it's not gonna stick and doesn't make too much of a mess. And there we go, that's my card finished for Christmas in July. Um, here's a look at another little card that I made using the same step set, coloring them, coloring the animals exactly the same way, um, but just something a little bit different that's not Christmassy. So just to look at how you can use these images in two different ways. I really hope you enjoyed this today. Thank you so much for joining me. Here's a few other videos that you might be interested in as well. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.